Hello there, everybody. It's me again, Ian Douglas, the storyteller. I to come to you today uh, representing Eureka at home, and here I am at home myself, and uh, I'm, we're going to tell you a story. Uh, this is our third story, and if you've been watching the other ones that we've been doing, you would know that the, the, each week there's a theme. This week's theme is colour. Um, but we like to not just use words... Uh, we also like to use shadow puppets, and we thought what would be quite nice is to maybe show you, uh, in a really simple way, how you can make your own shadows and your own shadow plays, so you could do it yourself while you're at home. And uh, it's really simple, and I imagine you probably have everything you need somewhere in the house. So without further ado, let's nip over there, and I'll show you how it's done. So to make your puppets, and we've got two down here at the moment, you might recognise them actually. Also at Eureka at home at the moment, my friend Gary Bridgins and Professor Pumpernickel have been making videos as well. We've turned them into shadow puppets. So this is what you'll need to make your puppets. You'll need uh, glue, and there's varieties of different glues, prit sticks and things down there. You'll need uh, a pair of uh, scissors, and if you're not very confident with cutting, although you should always have a go at cutting, it's good for you. Uh, you might need an adult to help you out with the cutting. You'll need uh, some card, and we've got some black card, and we've got some white card, but you could use anything with it. You could even use uh, a cornflakes box cut up. Uh, you'll need uh, some kind of stick. We have got kebab sticks there. They're quite sharp on the end, so do be careful, but you could uh, get a stick out the garden, I think. Uh, we, you'll need something to draw with, and uh, that is pretty much it. Oh, a light. You are going to need a light, and we'll show you why you need a light if you come with us. So once you've made your shadow puppets, uh, what you need is a piece of pale cloth. We've just got an old white curtain and strung it up from the ceiling, and you'll need your torch, you see. And as long as your torch is behind the shadows, the shadow puppets, it'll cast a shadow onto the screen. Now this is what it looks like from behind the screen. Uh, let's show you what it looks like from the uh, lights on the other side. So here's a shot from the other side of the screen. And as you can see, Mr. Bridgins and Professor Pumpernickel are having a dance on the screen. So uh, that's how simple it is. And what we'll show you very, very quickly is how to uh, construct your puppet and then you can play to your heart's content. So the first thing you need to do is draw an outline of the puppet that you want to make. Now remember this is a shadow, so you don't need to think about the details, like its face for instance. But you do need to make sure that the outline is thick enough so that you can cut it out without chopping any bits off it. So there is our simple outline. So the second thing you need to do is you need to cut out your, uh, your shadow puppet, going round the lines as carefully as you can. Now listen, if you're not very good with scissors, like I'm not, make sure you get a, a sensible adult, like your uh, your parents or somebody else, to help you cut out. So anyway, we won't bore you by showing you the whole process. I'm sure you know what cutting is. So once your puppet's cut out, the uh, last thing you need to do is put your stick onto the puppet. Uh, we're using these little glue dots, they're quite useful, but if you haven't got them, any bit of tape or a bit of glue that you've got uh, will, will do it. Uh, you've got to decide where to put your stick uh, and once your stick's on your puppet's ready to go and there you have it there's our snowman puppet uh, jumping around on the screen all you need now is a story and uh, and to play and the more people you've got involved the more hands you've got the more puppets you could have on your screen uh, so go for it please Pl make some shadows make some stories make some plays and, uh, and enjoy your time at home. But anyway, we'll stop this now and uh, we'll crack on with a story. So I hope you enjoy our story that we've got for you this week. Take care. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a hare. Oh, look, here comes Mr. Hare now. He's a handsome-looking fellow, don't you think? 
Once upon a time, there was an elephant. Oh, here comes Mr. Elephant right now, slow and steady, as usual. Well, Hare and Elephant were the best of friends. But the problem was, you see, they didn't have any food because they were very, very poor. But worry not, because luckily for them, they came upon a farm. Now, they went to see the farmer who promised if the hare and the elephant worked really, really hard at the end of the day, he would reward them with a great big pot of beans. And so the hare and the elephant agreed. So the very next day, the two friends set to work. That's to say that Mr Hare, he started work, running here and running there, but not Mr Elephant. Mr Elephant stood around, grumbling and groaning at how tired he was. Well, at the end of the day, true to his word, the farmer provided the hare and the elephant with a big pot of beans. Now Hare had worked so hard he could hardly wait to eat his fill. But Naughty Elephant, when he saw the pot of beans, well he was so greedy he didn't want to share with Hare. And so he hatched a plan. He said, Hare, I can't possibly sit down and eat beans with dirty feet. I'll have to go down to the river and wash my feet first. Well, be quick about you, said Hare, for I am very, very hungry. And so Elephant, he set off. Now, what you probably don't know about elephants is that once upon a time, they used to have a row of buttons all the way along their big, fat, wobbly bellies. And as Elephant arrived down at the river, he started to undo his buttons slowly peeling off his grey, saggy skin. And when he removed it, he revealed the multicoloured creature that he was underneath. Now Hare was still sat by the fire, watching the pot of beans bubbling away to themselves, waiting patiently for Elephant, when suddenly out of the undergrowth came a horrible, multicoloured creature, the likes of which he'd never seen before. And that creature was making a horrible sound. <laughs> Hair was so frightened by the multicoloured creature making the horrible sound that he ran away into the bushes to hide. Suddenly, Elephant stopped and chuckled, and he sat down and he gobbled away all of the beans. He ran back down to the river, he put on his grey skin, and then he came and he joined his friend Hare by the fire. Oh, he said, the pot's empty, Hare. Where have all the beans gone? Well, said Hare, a horrible creature, multicoloured it was, came screaming out of the bushes, and I ran away, and while I was gone, it must have eaten all of the beans. Well, later that evening, as the two friends went to sleep side by side, Hare's tummy grumbled with hunger, elephants grumbled with contentment. Well, the next day came, and just as before, Hare worked hard all day, running this way and running that. But once again, not Elephant. Elephant just stood around, watching his friend work, and grumbling and groaning about how tired he was. Well, at the end of the day, once again, true to his word, the farmer provided the friends with a bubbling pot of beans and they looked good and hare was hungry but elephant didn't want to share and so once again he made his excuses and he went off down to the river he unbuttoned his buttons and took off his saggy gray skin 
once again revealing the multicoloured creature that lay beneath. Well, he turned, and he knew where his friend would be, and he ran as quick as he could. <laughs> Well, once again, Hare was chased away into the undergrowth. And when Elephant could see that he'd gone, he sat down and he ate all of the beans. And when he'd finished, he ran down to the river and put back on his grey skin. When he arrived back at the fire, he said, Hey, Hare, that pot's empty. What's happened to the beans? <gasps> it came back, said Hare, the multicoloured creature. Well, it scared me away and it must have eaten the beans itself. Well, that night, as they lay by the side of the fire, well, Elephant, he slept soundly. Hare couldn't sleep at all. His tummy was so sore with hunger. But then suddenly he noticed Elephant's belly seemed to be getting bigger, whilst his started to shrink. And suddenly, Hare became quite suspicious. Well, on the third and final day, this day dawned just like the other two. Hare saw him working hard all day, while his friend the elephant did nothing but sit and grumble. Just like the last two days, once again the farmer, true to his word, provided the two friends with a bubbling pot of beans. Hare's hunger had grown so big he could hardly wait to eat them. But Elephant, as we know, had other ideas. He went down to the river once again, but this time Hare would not be fooled. He followed his friend all the way to the river and watched as Elephant took off his grey skin, revealing the multicoloured creature that had scared Hare so much. And so he went back to the fire and prepared his revenge. You see, what Elephant didn't know was earlier that day, while he had been taking a snooze under the midday sun, Hare had been busy. He'd fashioned himself a bow and arrow and had hidden it by the side of the fire. Well, when the multicoloured creature came running to scare him, Hare let fly. E twang <whistles> When Elephant finally pulled out the arrow, he turned to his friend the hare and said, Hare? How dare you shoot me with an arrow? What kind of friend is that? Oh, said Hare. How dare you talk about friendship? It was you tricking me, eating all of the beans. Well, I'll teach you a lesson. Tonight, all of the beans in that pot are mine. But you know, as they sat there by the fire, Hare... He couldn't see his friend Elephant go hungry. And you know, he's such a fine chap, he shared them with his friend.